Welcome back, everybody. We are almost ready to get into that next game. But before we do, I want to talk to y'all real quick about one of our amazing sponsors, Matcherino, where you can go and check out their page and donate directly to this event. That money goes straight into the prize pool for this event for the winning team. And if you donate $10 or more, you can get a free bag of amazing Crave Beef Jerky. They come in amazing flavors like chili lime, garlic chili pepper, and even more. So go ahead and donate there and get some of that Crave Beef Jerky. With that, I will give y'all back into the trusting care of Volticus as we get into this next game. Trusting care might be a strong set of words there, but we are back into our set of games here. And last game we had a very crazy Econ Cheese versus two base all in, which was quite enjoyable, it was enthralling to watch, but right now we are in a PvP, we are loaded in, and I'm with my co-caster here, Venomous Stare. How you doing, my friend? Doing well, Vault. I'm excited for game two. Game 1 was really everything you could hope for as far as an action-packed, Protoss aggressive build goes. And this game we have PvP, and to me, PvP is kind of an interesting matchup to watch because so much of it is figured out, at least as far as the early and mid-game goes, and so much of it is just trying to cut corners and be razor-sharp with your builds. And a lot of time we see players just do mirroring builds for a very long time throughout the game. Absolutely, often centralized around this two base, uh, uh, sorry, two gate early aggression here, often with stalkers, sometimes with adepts, it used to be a lot about adepts, just getting that early aggression and trying to see if you can just shade around the base, try and get some probe kills, however it's all moved around a lot to heavy stalker play now, and then after, thank you, and yeah. It heavily revolves around this stalker play, and then once you hit the tech, so it often comes around to immortals, maybe even stargate times. Some people like to go for that void race just because of the versatility of them. But we have got ourselves spawned into our next game here. We do have spawning in the top left hand corner as our yellow Protoss. He is representing Silent Aftermath. He is Chris. And in the bottom right, we have Fight Some Crime of Team Reason, or excuse me, Team Risen. And he's on a one-game winning streak. He had a very good game in the opening match for a Terran player. And it appears as though he's going to do a quick expo here. So actually, no, he's not. Two stalkers are going to be the choice. It looked like he was going to expo, but he thought better of it. And no. two stalkers is going to be the choice for yellow, Chris, as well. So like I was pointing out early on, we see pretty much mirroring builds. One person got warp gate sooner, one person got the mothership core sooner, but... It's pretty much the same stuff here, Volt. Absolutely, yeah. As you were saying, he is representing Reason rather than Risen today. And he is being the voice of Reason here. Not quite going for that expand, but I think he might be going for a proxy with this pylon in the north side of the map. Both player stalkers are moving across the map, and we do have an adept first change up here rather than two extra stalkers here. Yeah, and this is one of those slight variations and it is, is a very slight variation. But I'm really excited to see if he does decide to proxy. I'm almost certain that he will. There's real no reason to patrol your probe over there, but once he does put a pylon down over there, to me, that's more of a Stargate proxy spot, as Fight Some Crime does elect to sort of spread his stalkers out in an intelligent location here. One at the top of the ramp, one patrolling sort of at the north side of his natural ramp. And he's going to send out a phase shade as well. Now going back to the proxy, if he... Oh, it looks like that probe's finally moving. Okay, usually if people make a pylon kind of on a high ground like this, it's either to do like a warp gate rush and they're going to use it to warp in, and it's too far away to do that in PvP. So I'm thinking Stargate. Because the Stargate proxies are usually the closer ones, and if you want to do like a proxy DT, that's usually in the top right of the map. But here we go. A little bit of Stalker v Stalker action as Chris takes some free shots and fights some crime, gets a stalker for the first blood. As it is 5v3 in terms of stalkers. Two more stalkers on the way for the red player of Risen. And he has decided to take that expansion. And look at this, this pylon's actually going to be used for a warp in, and it's gonna take a pursuit angle, get some shots onto the Chris stalker, just shield damage, and a sentry combo comes up and splits the army in half, Volt. But I don't think it's going to be enough. Well, it's not enough stalkers here for Chris. It's warping extra few. Just a little bit slow here. He's going to get uh, lose an extra stalker here. 
Photon overcharge does go down, though. Yeah, and that photon overcharge will save Chris's skin for the time being. But the Protoss is going to try to push up here, fight some crime. And the Stalkers do have nice range. Kite's back. Notice that he's trying not to take hold damage. He's always kiting back the weak ones after they lose shields. And Chris is trying to defend here. Both the sentries are getting low. A cam field goes out there. That's an old school Destiny reference for you guys. Mm -hmm. And Fight Some Crime does have a quite a, a little stalker advantage here, relatively small. And with just the one pylon out at the natural for Chris and that going down, he's in a very awkward position here. But a power mortal comes out, and this immortal packs a punch, especially versus armored units, which of course stalkers are. And two of them come up. Now with this Immortal Eye, he's able to push this sort of force away, but the Adepts are here to split up this army here. He's going to have to divert the attention here of all these Stalkers and Immortals to try and deal with these Adepts. And as soon as he goes up to deal with them, there will be the Stalkers moving into the natural. Yeah, here come the Stalkers, and it was nice Sim City there. He actually trapped one of the Adepts, and the Immortal, like I said, just does so much front-loaded damage. Robo and Blink on the way here for our red bottom right player fight some crime. So we do have the Blink coming out for Fight Some Crime, as well as that later Robo. That later Robo means he's going to have less Immortals. However, he's even going to go for a Warp Prism. It's going to exemplify the fact that he has less Immortals, and he's going to be using Blink. So he's going to be using a combination of Blink and Warp Prism Micro to try and counteract the bonus damage those Immortals can do. Try and outmaneuver them, because they are slow, four-legged robot units. Unlike Stalkers, which are pretty maneuverable, even without Blink. Uh, and when you see five gateways going up like this in a PvP in the mid game, and especially without this fourth gas taken, it's really looking like it's going to be sort of a bust play here as Blink starts up for Chris. Now Chris really just has to focus on getting out Immortals because Immortals are what you need to counter Blink Stalker all ends. Unfortunately, I do not think that Chris knows. Yeah, he doesn't really have vision of the base of Fight Some Crime, so he doesn't know how hard he's committing to this. And Fight Some Crime has sentries, so this could be really brutal. Fight Some Crime wants to partition the army off, maybe even get the Immortals if he's lucky. The problem is with that shield ability being changed away from Hardened Shield all those years back, it's harder to pick off Immortals. And here we go, he's going to try to split the army, and that's what I mean, that Immortal took a lot of damage, and with Blink Micro, he does successfully pick it off. That was slick there from Fight Some Crime. That was beautiful. Beautiful uh, force fields are able to take off one. That's half of the Immortals gone in a blink of an eye there. No pun intended. And all of a sudden, that army's a lot weaker. So we have a lot of Stalkers out here for Fight Some Crime. A second Immortal joining the fray here. But is it able to help here with the beautiful blink micro? But with the Photon Overcharge going up, I think that's really going to be the defining factor here in this fight because it really prevents Fight Some Crime from getting as far up as he needs to be and he's going to just continue to press forward, blink the weak stalkers back and Chris is going to be tempted to pull workers here as if he starts to lose immortals it's not going to be good for him as the disruptor does come out Chris managed to sneak out a robo bay but he had to sacrifice immortal production and with that photon overcharge pylon going down and 10 workers as well is looking very bad for Chris it's so bad that so many stalkers here, all with blink here. If he's able to blink right on top of these mortals, he could take them all out despite having heavy losses here, but it would win him the game. There he goes, there's the blink, and he's able to take down the remainder of the forces here of Chris. But the disruptor, disruptor shot coming! Oh, ooh, nice blink, as he only gets a couple, but the disruptor goes down. And not even Mechanic himself could save this game with disruptors. This fight some prime with the warp prism. At the front door, he's just going to be able to infinitely warp in here and in the game. Chris, quite simply, is too far behind. He's down all the way at 29 supply. I think so. The last couple stalk is about to go down. He's only got a probes and a mothership core. Last photon overcharge, last stand here against Fight Some Crime here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I think this fight is going to be a little futile as we only have. Oh, and there's a GG. 44 probes have gone down that last final moments. Risen is going to start taking this 2-0. Yeah, and that was a hell of a win from Bite Some Crime. I just want to focus on a few of the things that he did right that game. First and foremost, opening up with that aggression vault, that was really, really intelligent. That meant that he was in the driver's seat from the get-go. Anytime that you can do builds where you're really dictating the flow of the game throughout almost the entire game, 
that's a great position to be in as a StarCraft player, especially as an aggressive Protoss. That's probably the Wraith that does that best. I would say dropping Terran, also very good at doing that. But then we saw Chris go into a quicker Robo, and if he was able to consistently make Immortals, he might have been able to hold that Stalker bust with Blink. However, he went into Robo Bay, which of course costs a lot of gas, and he had to sacrifice valuable Immortal production time because of that. And because Fight Some Crime went for an aggressive build off of two bases, he didn't take a third. Chris didn't really know what he was doing because he couldn't really afford to make the appropriate amount of observers or use his sentry energy for hallucination. Fight Some Crime was able to take him out in that way with that stalker bust. So nice play there from Fight Some Crime. I think so, yeah. And Chris was just, again, with the, all the side spikes, they've just been looking for that late game sort of play. They've been building it rather conservatively when we have fights and crime just going, what am I waiting for? I'm just going to kill you now. I'm going to go two base all ins and try and kill you that way, despite whether you're going to have the better tech move with all those immortals. Maybe not even have blame, but disruptors as well. They could have changed the tide, but fights and crime just didn't give the time for it. Yeah, and that's one thing you always have to consider about StarCraft, especially in a mirror matchup. Because think about it, in a mirror matchup, everyone's using the same units. So the small little deviations and corners you can cut are a really big deal. And in that game, one of the corners that got cut was sacrificing Immortal Production from Chris to tech up into the Robo Bay and try to get up to that Disruptor. Now, because Fight Some Crime did such an aggressive build and didn't make the third, it meant that Chris really had to have those extra, maybe, you know, one and a half, two Immortals. And he didn't have that. So when the attack came, he wasn't able to hold. So great move from Fight Some Crime there. And another thing I want to point out about Fight Some Crime's build is he very intelligently set up his build from the early game to the mid game. Everything he did interacted well with each other. From the, prox the proxy pylon pressure on the high ground, which wasn't actually proxy stargate like i originally thought he ended up moving the worker further south down so he could warp in on the low ground and he did really really well that game with his blink build he really did yeah the little niche little things he did with his proxy it was able to um to almost surround the attacking forces of chris in the very early game he had the full surround he had the pursuing uh stalkers and they had two more stalkers that just walked in they all sandwiched for a moment forcing Chris to have to run through a line of fire, which was very nice moves there by Fight Some Crime. Yeah, and one of the best things about Fight for uh, fight Some Crime, I think at least, is that he really had his build order planned out to where he clearly had step one, I'm going to do this two stalker pressure. Step two, I'm going to go into this sort of safe base if you want to be notified when we release videos like this please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you don't know where that is i'm not going to teach you how to use the internet there's probably no hope for you